You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis with another feast day quick take on the feast of St. John of God. You may be thinking, there are a million St. Johns. Which one is this one? I had to look him up and find him amid St. John the Baptist, St. John the Beloved, St. John of the Cross, St. John Damascene, St. John Marie Vianney, St. John Bosco, the list goes on and on, and they are all of God. Which one is this John, and how amongst all these holy St. Johns did he merit the title of God? Here's his story. The founder of the Brother Hospitaller Order, this St. John was a native of Portugal, memorable for several unique events in his life. In a peculiar and tragic beginning, he was kidnapped and lost to his family at the age of eight. Apparently, he lived on the streets for a long time before winding up in Spain as a shepherd, taken under the wing of a kindly farmer. But this short time of belonging to a family ended with a sad parting when the farmer wished John to marry his daughter, and John did not feel so called. In his twenties at this time, he joined the army and saw the world but ended up about 20 years later back in Spain, grown tired and disillusioned with military life. His search for a place to belong and a people to belong to had never been found in all his wanderings. Still searching, though, John traveled to Portugal to try to find his long-lost true family, but discovering news of his parents' death and no threads connecting him to living relatives, he returned to Spain lost and alone, drifting from one occupation to another. You might say he was suffering a kind of midlife crisis. But God took care of his wandering orphan. When his heavenly father decided he'd wandered enough at the age of 41, John was given a vision of the infant Jesus. In this vision, Jesus appeared as a small child on the roadside, dressed in rags and barefoot. He asked John to carry him along on his way. John agreed gladly and lifted the child on his shoulders, but dragging under the unusually heavy weight of the small child, when he reached a drinking fountain on the roadside, John proposed to the child that they should stop and rest. The child agreed. Once down from his shoulders, the child turned his eyes on his benefactor and was suddenly transformed. John of God, Christ said, looking down into John's astonished face, Granada shall be your cross and he immediately disappeared. After the vision, not knowing what else to do, John went to Granada and opened a small bookshop on the square where he finally found his true calling in a sermon he happened upon given by another John, Blessed John of Avila, that touched his soul so deeply with sorrow for his sinful life that he was in danger of losing his sanity. He was, in fact, incarcerated in the mental ward of the Royal Hospital for a time. With some good advice from Blessed John of Avila, though, he was released and set back on course. Having been welcomed into the church after a worthy confession, he followed his advisor's counsel to forget himself by doing good for others and became the soul of charity to the needy in Granada. His piety, humility, and good example drew others to his cause, and John's ability to distribute practical charity was increased tenfold by the additional help and caring for the formerly ignored and suffering poor of Granada's pain. Though his followers continued to multiply, and a number of his hospitals sprang up throughout Spain within a decade, St. John died in 1550 and did not live to see his order of hospitalers approved by Rome which happened in 1572. This order exists to this day, providing health care and maintaining hospitals in 46 countries throughout the world. But why did he inherit his special distinction amongst all the St. John's? He's not called St. John of the Hospitals. John had found his work among the poor and suffering, but his home was not amongst them. And he is not known as John of Granada or John of Spain either, because he traveled the world and no place had a claim on him. Today's saint did finally find his one and only, his true home, finally, and he is thereby named. He is properly known as John of God. An addendum for the feast day. A much-needed charity in our times that I'm sure would be approved by St. John is to not only pray for, 
but to make personal visits to, or perhaps more practical in these days of continued pandemic rules, to take time to send cards and letters to those who are shut in and alone at home or in nursing care facilities or sick in hospitals. This is a wonderful corporal work of mercy that we can share with our children. If your family doesn't personally know anyone in need, ask your pastor, he'll know, or consider sending a packet of cheerful cards to the nurse's desk at your local hospital or nursing home with directions that they might be distributed where most needed. Alternatively, consider donating to homeless shelters near you, especially in these difficult financial times many are displaced and wandering as St. John did. In our worry over troubles in foreign lands, let's not forget to pray for and do what we can to help those suffering right here on our own doorsteps. In honor of St. John of God, who knew that the care of hearts and bodies and souls go together, St. John of God, patron of the sick of both body and mind, and special intercessor of hospitals, pray for us.